Hi everyone, in the first episode I mentioned calculating the velocity required to shoot a ball through a hoop as an example of a problem that could be solved using the kinematic equations. In this video we'll be working through an example of such a problem, first solving it by hand and then testing our solution by programming a simulation of the problem in the Unity game engine. Here's the exact problem we'll be solving. P is a point that lies 66 meters to the right of and 9 meters up from point A g, the acceleration due to gravity, is negative 18 meters per second squared downwards. If an object is launched from point A such that it reaches a maximum vertical displacement of 25 meters and passes through point P, calculate the initial velocity with which the object was launched. If you'd like to tackle this problem on your own, now would be a good time to pause the video. Alright, so since the kinematic equations deal specifically with motion in a straight line, we're going to have to break this motion down into its vertical and horizontal components. Let's list what we know for each of these. So for the upwards motion, the displacement is h, the acceleration is g, and the final velocity at the top of the arc will be 0. For the downwards motion, the object moves from a height of h down to point p, so since we're taking downwards movement as being negative, we can write the displacement as py minus h. Once again, the only acceleration taking place is the acceleration due to gravity, so the acceleration is simply g. And at the top of the arc, the initial velocity is, of course, 0. Finally, for the horizontal motion, we know only that the displacement is given by px, and that since we're ignoring the effects of air resistance, there is zero acceleration acting horizontally. As you know, we need three known values to be able to use the kinematic equations, so we need to find one more piece of information about the horizontal motion. The key here is to realize that the horizontal motion will take the same amount of time as the upwards motion plus the downwards motion. So for the horizontal motion, we can write time equals time up plus time down. Let's begin by writing an equation for our initial upwards velocity. We'll want to start with a kinematic equation that contains initial velocity, as well as our known variables, displacement, acceleration, and final velocity. Equation 5 fits these criteria, so let's take that and substitute in what we have listed here on the left. So final velocity becomes 0, acceleration becomes g, and displacement becomes h. We can rearrange to solve for initial velocity squared, and then take the square root of both sides to arrive at an equation for initial upwards velocity. Let's then figure out the time of the upwards motion. We need an equation that includes time, as well as our known variables, so we'll be using equation 4. Once again, I'll substitute in what we have listed here on the left. Displacement becomes h, final velocity becomes 0, and acceleration becomes g. I'll then rearrange to solve for time squared, and take the square root of both sides. We also need to know the time of the downwards motion. This time we'll be using equation 3, since we know the initial velocity, not the final velocity. We'll substitute in what we have listed here on the left, so displacement becomes py minus h, initial velocity becomes 0, and acceleration becomes g. Then rearrange to solve for time squared, and take the square root of both sides. Now that we have equations for time up and time down, we can solve for the initial velocity of the horizontal motion. Our known variables here are displacement, acceleration, and time, so we'll be using equation 3 again. We can substitute in what we have listed here. Displacement becomes px, time becomes time up plus time down, and acceleration becomes 0. We then rearrange to solve for initial velocity and substitute in our expressions for time up and time down. Now that we have equations for both the initial horizontal velocity and the initial vertical velocity, it's time to substitute in our actual values. So substituting into the initial horizontal velocity equation, we get a value of 22. And substituting into the initial upwards velocity equation, we get a value of 30. Thus, the final answer to this problem is that the initial velocity required to shoot the ball through point P is 22 meters per second on the x-axis, and 30 meters per second on the y-axis. Let's now program a simulation of this problem in the Unity game engine. Okay, so I have a simple scene set up here in Unity with two sphere objects. The one is called Ball, and it's got a rigid body attached, and the other is just the target object. 
and as per the problem specifications, it is 66 units to the right of the ball and 9 units up from the ball. Let's now create a new c -sharp script. I'm going to call this something like ball launcher. And we can open that up. And in here, we're going to want a reference to the rigid body of the ball and a reference to the transform of the target object. We'll then also want to be able to specify the maximum vertical displacement uh, of the ball when it's launched, which in the diagram I called h. So I'll set that to 25. And then we also want a variable for the gravity, which I'll set to negative 18. All right, let's now create a method returning a vector 3. I'll call this calculate launch velocity. And in here, we're going to want to start off by calculating PY, which is the displacement of the ball from its initial position to the final position. So we can say float displacement Y is equal to target dot position dot Y minus ball dot position dot Y. Then we can do the same thing for PX, except we're going to make it work in three dimensions. So I'm instead going to make this a vector three and I'll call it displacement xz. This is equal to a new vector 3. On the x-axis, we have target.position.x minus ball.position.x, 0 for the y-axis, and for the z-axis, of course, just target.position.z minus ball.position.z. All right, so with this information, we can now use the equations we figured out earlier to calculate the vertical and horizontal velocity. Let's start with vector 3 velocity y. Set this equal to vector 3 dot up multiplied by, and now we'll use our equation. So uh, we'll say mathf dot square root of negative 2 multiplied by gravity multiplied by h. All right, and now for our velocity on the x and z axes, we can say vector 3 velocity xz is equal to, and once again referring to our equation, px we change to displacement xz, so I'll write displacement xz divided by, and now let's open up some brackets, and then in here we've got square root of negative 2 times h divided by gravity plus another square root. This time it's 2 times, and then in brackets we want py minus h, or in our case displacement y minus h. Close brackets, and then divide that by gravity. All right, now we just need to say return velocity xz plus velocity y. Okay, let's then create a void method called launch. And in here, we're simply going to set the ball's velocity equal to the result of our calculate launch velocity method. So we'll want the launch method to be called uh, when the user presses a session key. So inside of the update method, we can say if input dot get key down, I'll make it the space key, then we will call the launch method. Now, one problem is that as soon as we start the game, the ball is going to be falling down because of the rigid body attached to it, but we don't actually want gravity to take effect until we launch the ball. So in the start method, let's say ball dot use gravity equals false, and then right before we set the ball's velocity, we can say ball dot use gravity equals true. We're also, of course, going to want to set the gravity that the uh, rigid body is going to use to our own gravity value over here. So we can say physics dot gravity is equal to, and we'll say vector three dot up multiplied by our gravity value. Let's also do a printout of the initial velocity so that we can see if what we calculated earlier uh, was in fact correct. So let's say print calculate launch velocity. Okay, 
So in Unity, we're going to want a object to attach the ball launcher script to. So I'll just create a new empty game object, call this launcher, and attach the ball launcher to that. Can then drag the ball into the ball slot and the target, unbelievably, into the target slot. Let's then press play. And if we press the spacebar, we should see this fly off and hit into the target object. As you can see, the printout verifies our solution of 22 on the x-axis and 30 on the y-axis. All right, two quick things that I want to mention. Uh, first of all, the h value, of course, has to be greater than the vertical displacement between the ball and the target. Uh, you can see if we move this up too high and then try launch the ball, we're going to get an invalid velocity assign attempt. But if I say increase this to 50, now of course it will work just fine. Uh, the second thing is if you want to have a positive gravity value, so say set this to positive 25, uh, in which case the h value needs to be below the target since uh, the ball will be falling upwards. So let me set this to say negative 20. Uh, right off the bat, this isn't actually going to work. You can see that the velocity it gives us on the y-axis is positive, whereas it should actually be launching the ball downwards. We can fix this very easily if we just multiply our velocity on the y-axis by negative sine, that's sine with the g, of the gravity. So now if for whatever reason you want a positive gravity value, that is something that you can have. A final thing I'd like to do is draw the predicted path of the ball in the scene view. So in order to do that, we'll need to sample the displacement of the ball at different moments in time. And we can do this using our third equation. But first we're going to need to figure out the overall flight time of the ball uh, from the initial position to the target. And of course we already have that. It's this uh, bit that we are dividing by to get our velocity xz. So let's cut that out and just create a float here called time. And then we can simply divide by time over here. All right, and I'll get rid of this extra bracket. So now we want this calculate launch velocity method to return not just velocity, but the time as well. So we're going to have to create a struct here. I'll call this something like launch data. And this will contain a public read-only vector three, the initial velocity, as well as a public read-only float called the time to target. All right, then we want a constructor. So in Mono Developer, we can just press Command I to automatically generate one for these two uh, members here. And then we'll change it so that this method returns a launch data struct. And we can also change the name to calculate launch data. And then it's going to need to return a new launch data can pass in this as the initial velocity and then the time as well. All right, let's get rid of the printout. We don't need that anymore. And we'll be setting ball.velocity equal to calculate launch data dot initial velocity. All right, let's then create a void method called draw path. And in here, we're going to want to get a launch data and set this equal to the result of calculate launch data. Then to draw this arc, we're obviously going to need to split it up into smaller line segments. So let's create an integer called resolution. I'll set this to say uh, 30 by default. And then we'll want a for loop going from int i equals one to i less than or equal to resolution i plus plus. So now if we write float simulation time is equal to i divided by cast to a float resolution multiplied 
by launchdata.time to target. This will now give us a variable that goes from zero to the overall time. So we can then say vector three displacement and using the third equation, we can say launch data dot initial velocity multiplied by our time plus gravity multiplied by time squared divided by two. All right, so then the actual position that the ball will be at at this moment, let's call it vector three uh, draw point will be equal to the ball's starting position, so ball.position, plus its current displacement. We'll then need to know the previous draw point. So outside of the loop, let's create vector3 previous draw point, and this will start at the ball's initial position. And then we can say debug.drawLine from the uh, previous draw point to the new draw point, and I'll set the color to green. And once we've done that, we'll want to set the previous draw point equal to our current draw point. So previous draw point equals draw point. Okay, it should be as simple as that. So uh, let's just make a little bool over here. Public bool debug path. And in the update method, we can say if that is true, then we are going to call our draw path method. Okay, got a small error here. Gravity is a float, and we're trying to add that to a vector three. So I'll have to change this to plus vector three dot up multiplied by gravity. All right, that error should disappear. And if we now press play and go into the launcher and enable debug path, we can see the path being drawn out. And we can move this around. Let me make my gravity negative again, and then move the height up above the ball. So set it to 30, and then I'll bring this down a bit as well. All right, so you can see that it's working. And if we press spacebar, then it will follow that path. And throughout the flight, it will keep updating the path to show the new path if we were to launch it again at that moment. All right, that is everything for this video. So until next time, cheers.